Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. I was not expecting to make this video today. I was expecting my last video, Confessions of a Physical Media Collector, to be something I would leave off for a couple of days, let it have its day, and let it grow views and all that, let people watch that video. But we need to talk about the PlayStation Network, because PlayStation Network is down right now, and it's been down since at least this morning. I tried to play it around 11 o'clock Australian time, and this is the East Coast Sydney time. So I played it at 11 o'clock, tried to play Minecraft, and it would not open the Minecraft servers. I checked my internet connection, internet was on, everything was fine, the, the PlayStation was connected to internet. But it would not, it would not let me play Minecraft, it would not let me get into Minecraft. It wouldn't even show the main menu of Minecraft. It would just go on that opening frame of Minecraft and just keep panning and it wouldn't even give me an option to do anything. And then I turned off the internet connection and Minecraft seemed to work. So something weird with the PlayStation Store needs to be said. And I know this is going to be critical of the PlayStation Store and I know I've been really hammering on PlayStation the past couple of weeks. But I'm a long time fan of PlayStation. So, you know, as a long time fan of PlayStation, you want us to still give you our money when you can't even provide a game when, it, when your network's offline? When the PlayStation Network's offline, we should still be able to access games that we've bought. And I've seen instances of users online saying, hey, we can't play these games. It's saying it needs to validate our license, but the PlayStation Network's down. How does it do that without the PlayStation Network? Well, you're starting to see why physical media is so important. I mean, I haven't tried it, but I think I can put that in my PlayStation, the disc version of this, as long as it's offline. If I try to connect to PSN, it's going to try to download a day one update or whatever. But I can put this in my PlayStation right now, and it's probably going to work if I turn my, uh, my PlayStation offline. Spider-Man 2 will work as well. And we're seeing, we're seeing the need for physical media again. And we're seeing PlayStation actively trying to get rid of disc drives. With the PlayStation Pro console, I saw all the fanboys out there of PlayStation saying, we don't need a disk drive, we don't need a disk drive. Play PS6 will be all digital and it'll be good enough by then. We'll go all digital with PS6 and we don't need a disk drive on PS5 Pro, we don't need it. Well, I got Astro Bot for $79. This game is 109 on the PlayStation Store in Australia. I got this for 79 price match to DB games, price match target Australia. And got it for 79 bucks. I, had, I would have had to pay $40 more if I got it on PSN. And also, if I wanted to play an older version of WWE 2K, if I didn't want to check out 2K24, if I wanted to go back and play 2K22, now obviously I didn't buy this when it was released, but if I wanted to play that, I can't buy this on the store anymore. They've removed it from the store. You can't actively purchase that anymore. But do you see what I'm talking about with physical media? We are now at the mercy of the PlayStation Network and PlayStation Store if that even comes back. I mean, it will come back eventually, don't get me wrong. 2011 came back and we thought that was a big pain in the butt when that happened. But we are still at the mercy of these things now. And you, if you have a license to a game, shouldn't you be able to play it if everything's offline? Shouldn't you be able to play it if the PlayStation Network goes down? Hey, you purchased it, didn't you? Well, this new California law begs to differ. I've read about this new California law that has recently been passed about stop calling it buy and purchase because you're not actually buying or purchasing what you're hitting buy and purchase on. You're, you're buying a license to that content and the license can be taken away at any given time. As you've seen today with PlayStation Network down, your license is reliant on the PlayStation Network. And I think that's wrong. And I get what people are going to say, oh, it's just temporary, it's just temporary. What happens if it's not temporary? What happens if the PlayStation Network doesn't come back? What happens if this was some bigger thing that becomes worldwide news and some bigger thing where it's like, oh, the PlayStation Network was hacked or something? We don't know what's happening. They're saying it was a bug and they're saying it was apparently all this adware was added to PlayStation and they're trying to get rid of it. But... We don't know what caused it. We don't know. Sony's not updating us actively on what's going on. And look, luckily I have my Switch that I bought the other day, my Switch OLED, and I've been really enjoying the Switch OLED this morning, as well as Minecraft. I found a way to get into that by turning off my Wi-Fi and being able to get in that way. But the idea that you are buying games and you're not allowed to play them if the PlayStation Network goes offline is absolute bullcrap. 
And that is something that we need to analyze as a community, the gaming community, not just PlayStation, not just Xbox. I mean, Switch are better with this because they have physical cartridges and they're really backing physical. But even Switch have some tendencies to put stuff just online with little, like, certain updates and certain games. But Switch are better with this. But I'm talking about the big, um, the big two, uh, Sony and Microsoft. Xbox versus PlayStation. We need physical ownership of games and we need our disk drives to stay around because when stuff like this happens, yes, not everyone's going to have a disk version of Astrobot. I get it. This is going to be more picked up online. This is going to be incentive to buy this online. But essentially you've got a, what, $750 paperweight when the PlayStation Network's down? I'm just saying, this is really displaying why we need physical media. And I know the fanboys are going to say, oh, but it's just temporary. Oh, no, oh, yeah, whatever, it'll come back. What happens if it's down for a week? I'm just saying it could happen. And, yeah, I think, I'm not overjoyed with this whole thing. I mean, people are losing access to the games that they paid good money for. And if you wanted to play that game right now, let's say it was your day off or something. Let's say it was, hey, you applied for some leave, you're going to play through, I don't know, you're going to play through Spider-Man 2 and you planned to have your leave and hammer through a game and then the PlayStation Network's down and you can't play it that is atrocious to me and that is why I go physical media I mean if Apple went down if Disney if Disney Plus went offline tomorrow and Apple went down and the internet was offline I can still watch what's here what can I watch up there I can still watch Frozen 2 you know I can still grab that off my shelf and still watch it there is no licensing agreement there is no I mean there is an agreement when I buy that I purchase the disc and I own the content I own the disc, but Disney still retain ownership of the content on the disc. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I can play Astrobot right now. I can put that in my console and it will likely work. It'll install a 1.0 version of the game, but it will still be Astrobot. And I can still play it without a license, without an internet connection, without the PlayStation network. And I just think it's wrong that we're start suddenly becoming this dystopian sort of race of gamers of like, oh, we don't need disc drives, we don't need this, we don't need that. All in the thing of like, oh, progress, we've got to go this way, we've got to go that way. But we're giving up preservation and we're giving up the ability to hold big corporations to account. We're giving up our ability to say, hey, 109 is a bit steep for Astrobot. 79, I'm a bit more comfortable with that. I can go and buy it at the store for 79. This was at Target Australia, but as I said, they didn't have it in stock, so AB Games matched them and said, yeah, we want, we want, your custom, we want you as a customer. Physical media is kind of dwindling down, obviously, so... They're going to sell it to me at the target price. They're going to match it. More or less, more or less they're going to match it. I mean, some EB game stores are kind of hit and miss. JB Hi-Fi would have price matched without any questions asked. But yeah, I can play Spider-Man 2 if I want to do, you know? This whole idea that, hey, you will own nothing and you will be happy. Well, hey, if you hit purchase on that thing, you're having the mindset of you own that. You have bought that content. And for it to suddenly say, hey, we can't validate your license. You're not allowed to play this. That's wrong. And I think that this new California law is really good. I think this is the way to go. I think, I mean, a lot of these big companies have to play ball in Silicon Valley. So, you know, your Microsofts, your Sonys, your big studios like Paramount and all that. Get rid of the purchase button. Get rid of the buy button. Call it license. And then people will start associating license with, hey, I don't actually own this. Or call it long-term rental. And then people will actually understand what they're getting into instead of saying, hey, you own this. And then when the PlayStation Network goes offline, oh, you don't own it. It's actually ours. And we've just been, we've just been loaning it to you. But you know what? we can't let you play it until the PlayStation's back. When's it coming back? We don't know. I didn't intend on making this video today. As you said, I, I'm growing a bit of facial hair. You know, I'm trying to see how I look with a bit of facial hair before I have to go back to work soon. And yeah, I think it looks a bit atrocious. But, you know, try to do the Tribal Chief look. I've got on my Triple H shirt, by the way. I was just like, oh, I haven't wore this shirt on a video, so let's try I Am The Game. <laughs> but, you know, I think this is a bit of a... This is a massive deal. And this is something that we're going to have to think about as a gaming community and a PlayStation fandom and so on. What happens when these networks go down? What happens when you can't have your license validated? What happens if you can't get on to the PlayStation network? You lose access to some of your games. 
And what happens if it's a long-term thing? What happens if PlayStation fall tomorrow and say, hey, we're selling, we're selling the PlayStation division to Xbox. We are out of gaming and we're going to just focus on building our washing machines or whatever else Sony does. Do they still make washing machines? I feel like Samsung do all the washing machines. But, you know, that could happen and we could lose access to the PlayStation network and your gaming catalogue. They try to do it with a Discovery. So, yeah, I mean, what happens in that scenario? I think physical media is needed to preserve gaming and I think it's needed for when stuff like this happens and you want to play your games, you don't have to worry about licenses, you don't have to worry about internet connections. Yes, you're getting a version of the game that will probably have day one updates and all these patches, but you can still play the game in that state, in 1.0, you can still play it. I just think it's wrong that hey, when the PlayStation Network's down, you can't play the games because we said we can't validate your license. And yeah, that's what's happening at the moment. Let's hope PlayStation Network comes back soon. Maybe it's already back up. I'm recording this video. Maybe it's come back what I've been talking. So we don't know, but we'll see what happens. I think this is kind of a big deal. How big it is, I don't know, but I think a lot of people are going to be warming up to physical media and why we need a disk drive in these new PlayStation Pro consoles. I mean, yeah, you can install one on the side, but you know PS6 is going to try to do away with the disk drive completely. I think, yeah, we need, we need physical media still. And when stuff like this happens, it just shows how at the mercy of digital storefronts we are, how at the mercy of the internet we are. And hey, if you bought AstroBot, you're not playing it today if your license isn't validated for a Sony network, the PlayStation network, because... Yeah, that's down at the moment, and if they can't validate your license to the purchase of that game, and it's not even purchased, the licensing of that game, then you're not going to play it. And yeah, I think a lot of people need to start waking up and seeing what you're actually getting is not buying the game, what you're getting is a license to that game. It's like Microsoft Word. You get it for 365 days, and then it goes away, and you have to buy a new license. And yeah, they say this is like a lifetime license, but as we've seen with, uh, where is it? Horizon Zero Dawn, I talked about this in my previous video. Horizon Zero Dawn, I actually know, I did it in a social media post, I talked about this one. But this game has doubled in price. This used to retail for $25 on the PlayStation Store. And now they've announced the remaster and they wanted to close the loophole of people buying this for $25 and then upgrading for $10 or whatever dollars in Australia. And then paying a lot less than what the new version remaster would cost on the PS5. So this has doubled in price to $59.95. And you can still go out and buy this in Australia for, I think, nine bucks, nine, ten bucks at EB Games, uh, pre owned. You can probably get it at JB Hi Fi brand new for like 15. And, you know, this whole idea that, hey, we are at the mercy of these storefronts, the monopoly that these storefronts are starting to get, the duopoly, let's call it duopoly, because. Yes, there's, a, there's three companies in there, Switch, Nintendo are just off in the corner doing their own thing. So all due respect to them, they're off in the corner doing their own thing. As I look to the side and I just see something I bought the other day. Give me two seconds. You're going to love this, guys. I bought this the other day. I was in a Big W store in Australia. And I don't know if Big W is in America, so maybe you don't know what Big W is. It's basically another version of like Kmart, but like, or maybe it's like um, Walmart. It's kind of like a Walmart in America, like has a bit of everything. But I found an Atari 2600 Plus, and this is like a the new version with HDMI port and all that stuff. But it plays cartridge games, and I was like, this isn't freaking amazing. Like, you get the console that looks like the old one, and I grew up on Atari. My first video game console was an Atari 2600, given it was my sister's, and we had all the games, the Activision games, and all that stuff. But, yeah, I'm really happy with this purchase. I got this for, 100 and, I think, 160 because I got a discount because it was on sale. And, yeah. That Atari, I'm going to play the crap out of that when I get some games for it. I mean, it's got a cartridge in there, one cartridge. But I want to get, like, Dig Dug and all the proper cartridges I grew up on. So I'm going to wait to set that one up. I'm going to wait until I have all the cartridges I want, and then I'm going to play it. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, physical media is always going to have a place. And as we try to say it, it's not going to have a place. We don't need it. Do away with it. Well, Sony just showed us how we do need it. And, yeah. Also, if you want to... If you want to go back to older versions of games, like if I wanted to play a older version of Minecraft that didn't have all the crossover with Mojang, this one's 4J Studios, well, I can play a 1.0 version of this or whatever version this shipped with. And this is Java, by the way. 
So in additions, you can still access additions in the Minecraft menu, which is the way I play it. I play the additions and go back to PS4 version. Because the new version of Minecraft, you can't pause, you, you move slower, all this other stuff that 4J Studios did to improve the game. They just threw away and said, we're just going to do it ourselves. Thanks, guys, but go, no thanks. Well, yeah, you can play older versions of games, but we're not going to talk about that. Hey, what do you think about this PlayStation outage? Let me know, and I'll get back to you in the next one. I was not expecting to make this video, but yeah. It's big enough to get me to make another video in one day. So, yeah, tell me what you think about the PlayStation outage, and I'll get back to you. Peace.